very big trip this weekend, five days, four nights, doing 14 portages in Algonquin. And um, as some of you know, this canoe didn't have a yoke on it. So um, my boss here at the shop just uh, helped me install a yoke from an old canoe that we had laying on the property. And uh, I've got it all rigged up and ready to go. So I'm excited. Time for another adventure. I just arrived at Kiosk and um, I'm about to start my biggest solo trip so far. Five days, four nights. I've got 14 portages, almost 10k in portages. Um, I have my beautiful 27 pound skin on frame uh, canoe from Backcountry Custom Canoes and um, I've got a, a makeshift yoke installed into it so it's uh, going to be easier to carry and hopefully I'm going to get some single carries in. I'd like to do all of them by single carry but we'll see how it goes. Um, so tonight I'm just spending the night on kiosk and then tomorrow the portaging fun will begin. So um, I guess I better get going and uh, get on my way. I'm excited to get to my campsite for the night and uh, enjoy my last night relaxing before uh, it's time to do some serious traveling. Well, I'm all ready to go. My first portage is from the car to the lake. Not very far, but Figured if I was going to carry all this stuff all weekend, I might as well start right here. So, I've got my backpack here, and I'm ready to put it on and make my journey. Hey! Well, it's super pretty out here. I'm just going to uh, my first site tonight. It's just a short paddle, um, and then I get to pick one near the entrance to the portage for tomorrow morning. Um, the boat is taking on some water, which is freaking me out a little bit. Um, I'll put a video insert in here so you can see, but um, hopefully it's not a major concern. Um, I'm going to have to watch it tonight and see uh, <laughs> if I'm going to have to abort this trip. I really, really don't want to, so um, I do only have 30 kilometers of um, paddling and 10k of portaging, so um, hopefully it won't be an issue. So the dry bag was leaking some water, thank God, because um, there's quite a bit of water in the bottom of the canoe. Well, I am on Kiosk Lake. Found out how to say that right today by the, uh, from the lady at the desk. Um, and this lovely site, it's just one site from the portage to maple that I'm going to be taking tomorrow and uh, it's quite pretty I really like it I love that uh, there's some nice bench seats here because I did not bring a chair or a hammock and uh, it'll be nice and cozy for the evening well good day today <laughs> uh, the longest part of my day was my drive I was a little bit panicked today because um, I thought the boat was leaking. Uh, I put a dry bag in with some water and it turned out to have a hole in it and I slapped a piece of duct tape on it while it was actually leaking because I was, you know, I didn't want to empty it out and dry it and I didn't know how to mark it. I, I was all packed and ready to go. So um, anyways, I think that was the problem and I hope that was the problem because I'm really excited about this trip. I just got a nice steak on and some snow peas and uh, got a big cup of wine here. Cheers to my friend Sam. Um, this is gone tonight, so this is my only uh, meal that isn't freeze-dried for dinner, pretty much, um, and my only alcohol beverage this evening. So, cheers, everyone. Just watching the sun go down. It's really pretty here. It's a great sight, and. Um, I hear some speedboats in the background, but kind of smiling because I know that this will be the last night that I'll probably hear those. Um, 
morning. It is seven o'clock on Saturday, September 2nd. It is um, day two of my trip and uh, it's a big day for me. I have six portages today. I'm gonna take my tent down, I'm gonna pack my bag, I'm gonna make some breakfast and uh, should be out of here by eight o'clock. Well, this morning's breakfast is scrambled eggs with bacon and I'm going to um, put it, I guess, eat it right out of the pouch, I think. I think I can do that. We'll see. Okay, so here's my scrambled eggs and bacon, and uh, they actually taste pretty good. Ooh, that water is cold. Here I go. Potage number one. Well, that really sucked. Um, when I was at the house, I tried on the pack with the canoe, and it was great. It fit perfect. I could carry both of them together, no problem. Um, something changed, I don't know what, but now I can't get the top of the pack in between the seat and the yoke, and so, the canoe's sitting like this when I try to carry it, and I'm struggling to lift up the front. Portage 1 of 14. Um, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it no matter what. So if it takes me all day, then it takes me all day. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I just missed the moose. I know I did. Hear him? crashing through the woods. Crap! There's my sign, yes! Well, portage number two, Maple Creek to Maple Creek. Uh, I think it was a 190. Uh, it took me, I think, four minutes to carry my pack over and about the same to do the canoe. On to number three. So instead of carrying water in my Nalgene today and adding extra weight, I'm using my Extreme Straw. Um, it's really great. And just put the filter in, put the filter in the water and suck on it. Okay, portage number three was my first single carry. The, that one went by quick. It was just a 90 meter, I think. Just sitting here on a beaver dam. <laughs> fun, fun. <laughs> I have been loving paddling Maple Creek. I love small mirror waterways. It's uh, It's been so pretty so far. Okay, so I moved the yoke up just a tiny bit. Um, it might not be enough, but I'm gonna give it a try. This is uh, 600, 630 uh, meters, and uh, I'd really like to single carry this, so wish me luck. Well, my shoulders are getting pretty sore and tired. Um, I just finished my fourth portage. Um, I tried to double carry uh, the canoe and the pack pack. Um, I was looking at my video while I was walking back to get the canoe and it doesn't look like the pack is actually on the seat. I, I can't really tell. Um, you know, it's behind me and I can't see what's going on. I kind of wish there was someone here who could say, hey, um, that's not resting properly, or yeah, you're fine, or maybe it's just the weight of the pack and the canoe that's pushing on me that I feel so heavy. I don't know. But um, when I carry that canoe by itself, 
I feel like I could go for days like it's just so light and beautiful and the yolk set so perfectly so um, I think for today I'm just gonna do double carries well I got my pack on and uh, that's always a struggle for me to get it on I found this big huge rock back here and I just set it up on top of there and then toss it on my back just taking my time slow and steady wins the race all right portage number five 805 meters I don't believe that one I think that's a lot longer there was a lot of uphill and whew, I almost didn't make it my legs are really hurting now and my knees uh, telling me it's angry with me so um, I'm glad there's only one left and I cannot wait to get to my site I just had some chocolate covered almonds um, just to give me enough energy to get through the portage and now I'm gonna have a wrap real quick I've got a little bit of paddling to do 130 meter portage and then I'm on maple and then I can find a site portage number six coming up Well, I am on my last portage today, number six. I almost did it. Super excited. It's only 130 meters. And um, as I was pulling up to the portage, there was a canoe uh, sitting in the water. And uh, I couldn't really get in. And this boy comes out and tries to move it for me. And then a guy comes out and he says, are you from St. Catharines? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And I turned around to see my friend Derek Mawinney, who I have not seen since, oh my gosh, grade school maybe. Um, I used to play soccer with his sister. And uh, yeah, that was really random and really cool. Him and his son and his uh, sister's uh, son, so his nephew and uh, his brother-in-law are doing a trip. I guess they do one every year out here. So yeah, that was really, really cool. Anyways, as I've been talking to you, I've just reached the end of my last portage. However, I have to go back and get the canoe. Oh geez, this is maple and it looks pretty rocky, but I'm so glad I'm here. Really tricky getting in the boat here and uh, I feel like I'm gonna tip so I better stop videotaping. It is super windy out here. I'm just reaching uh, the main part of Maple. As I'm looking forward to sitting on these beautiful steps um, up at the top of the site it looks really pretty. There's a table and chairs and uh, not chairs but benches and stuff and I don't have a chair so um, I was going to paddle past, I actually paddled past it because there's another site just over there. Um, but this is on an island and I saw, um, I don't know, I guess they're canoes, I'm assuming. There's a couple of boats out in the middle of the lake there and I don't know if they're coming this way or not. There was an island site closer to the portage but I heard very loud people there so I think they took it. I actually see two boats coming this way from that direction too so I'm hoping that uh, those aren't those people because I could hear them all the way across the lake and uh, I paddled an extra half an hour just to get away from them so hopefully um, I get some nice peace and quiet tonight and uh, I get to relax because I am one tired girl right now. When I was packing for my trip, the tarp was on the maybe list and I love my tarp. I love tarping. I, there's nothing I like more than, you know, saying haha to mother nature when, you know, you've got a trip planned and you want to sit by the campfire and make s'mores and hang out and it's raining. And I just put a tarp up, all good. We can still hang out. So um, I was really torn about, do I bring the tarp? Do I not bring the tarp? Okay, um, I have one backpack and the canoe. That's it. Um, my gear is pretty decent. It's not like super backpacking 
type ultra lightweight you know like I, I have a tent I don't have to sleep under a tarp and no sleeping bag like I have a good sleeping bag it's a minus 40 and there's only so much room like you can't bring everything that you want to bring so um, once the food the sleeping bag and the tent were in there the room was pretty limited so um, the tarp got kicked out and part of the reason was I knew that I had this um, the footprint for my tent it's from my marmot tent and um, I thought, you know what, it's not that big, but I'll bring the string and I can just put it up, you know, if I need it. And tomorrow it's, it's supposed to rain actually from 1 a.m. till about 1 p.m. tomorrow. So um, I want to get up in the morning and make my oatmeal, right? I don't want to sit out in the rain if it's pouring and, you know, boil water. So, I mean, I have some good shelter here. I thought, well, with the shelter and this footprint, I can just come and sit under here. I can boil my water, have my hot chocolate, stay nice and dry. And then, you know, put my raincoat on and get back to packing and get on my way and, and enjoy my day. So, um, footprint is up, tarp issue resolves, and uh, didn't bring the extra weight. So, I'm pretty happy about that. It's September 2nd, day two of my journey. And um, I figured out that I portaged something like 7,000 meters today. Um, with all the double carries. I just re-rigged the canoe. Um, I flipped the yoke around so I shouldn't have that problem anymore with the bag getting stuck. We'll see tomorrow. Well, here's a video of me making dinner. Ha ha. Cooking like this is so easy. I don't know how good it is for you, but it is pretty easy. Well, I'm sitting here by the fire and I'm eating my three cheese pasta with chicken and zucchini and it's really, really, really delicious. I'm so happy. I'm just sitting here mowing down and I've got uh, a cup of hot chocolate ready to go when I'm finished to, to have for dessert. So I'm just going to have this and have a hot chocolate and then I'm going to go to bed very soon.